people keep asking, why don't you show truck campers? Why don't you show truck campers? Fine, all right. <laughs> but look at this thing. It's not a truck camper. It's a fully operational Death Star. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Vicious RV with the biggest truck camper I've ever seen. Look at it sitting next to a normal truck camper. The name Mammoth absolutely, uh, it, it lives up to the name, I think. Um, this thing just screams, tell me you want to like live in the mountains and hide from the government without telling me you want to live in the mountains and hide from the government. This might be zombie apocalypse rated. I don't know. This is the most over the top crazy thing I've ever seen. I, I'd actually never really seen or heard much of this brand before and I'm really having a ball going through this thing today. It almost feels weird calling it a truck camper. I mean, yeah, you set it in the bed of your truck, but it is a fully equipped travel trailer that you haul that you pick up and carry instead of tow behind you but it also weighs about as much as one of those giant things and as far as i can see it's got the price tag of about a fifth wheel um <laughs> but oh my lord this thing it is uh so it's fully aluminum framed it's got space for queen or king beds uh optionally you can option a king bed into this all power jacks they have multiple different off-grid like solar inverter packages you want to run the air you just want to keep the batteries topped off you want to live in this thing potentially totally off-grid i think you might be able to actually outfit this from the factory to do that it's a triple slide you can put a fireplace in it it's insanity and i love it now this like I said, this thing's incredible. Like if I just stood here and took a photo, you'd be like, huh, what travel trailer is that? Like, it doesn't read like a truck camper. It's like somebody took an entire travel trailer and ripped the axle off and said, throw that in the back of my truck. <laughs> That's basically what we're looking at here. Um, I mean, a floor to ceiling window in the back isn't something you see every day. And because there's so many slides, it's not like they could put cabinets there. I love that they just did something with it. It doesn't open for airflow, but uh, you've also got a uh, airflow fan. And anything you see in this, it's going to be like a nice version. They, I don't see a single area, whether it's an item, a widget, a whiz bang, a material. I don't see any space where they like cheaped out on one of these, uh, really. And I guess I'm just going to start going, grabbing stuff, opening stuff up, and seeing what we get here. And, and first of all, come on. Uh, a jackknife incliner couch so you can kick your feet up at night? Uh, that's cool. And that's going to fold down into, I'm going to call that just like a dog bed. I don't really know that you're going to be doing a lot of serious sleeping on there. But I mentioned like material premium. Um... Take a look at this. Like, so here's a common complaint that a lot of people have. Like, you're gonna look at this and say, Josh, you said they didn't cheap out, but there's no shade on the full entry window. That's dumb. Oh, contraire. You've got day night shades. And as you see, you don't like it's not in the door. Most shades in the door, the ones that I cry about all the time that I say I like so much. The fact is, one of the hiccups with them though, you have to open the door. Go outside, close the screen, mess with the shade, then come back inside. This you can do all inside like a motorhome, baby. Um, like just everything around the fascia. They put this nice little kind of soft touch scene. You see the little uh, indentation of my fingers there coming off the light. Look at the thickness of the doors. And are you noticing this is all, uh, like these are all hardwood. The cabinet styles, it is all wood. It is a sticker wrap. That's one of the only things that actually kind of surprised me on this. Like really, you just... You didn't go with an all hardwood with all the other stuff you did here, but uh, I, I don't know. If that's the worst that we come up with on this, I guess they're, uh, I guess we can rough it. Okay. Um, swinging over here. Uh, I have a big U dinette in a truck camper slide. Not necessarily unheard of, but still not exceptionally common. Now, your furnace and stuff, like under the dinette, is actually a bunch of systems stuff. So your furnace is down there, that's the white grate, and then the two black vents are your, your heat exhausts. But if you're looking at that, you're going, um, I don't know that I'm really going to be able to get into that table. Well, this is one of those cool lagoon tables where you can 
swing it around, slide it around, pivot, twist, and shout. You can do a little bit of whatever you want with it. And as you saw in our floor plan in a flash, not only can that uh, Udinet fold down, but you've also got this guy over here. And this reminds me of those like big swanky class A diesel pusher jobs that have like uh, a, a walk-in closet that like has a power drop bunk conversion or something like that, or a power drop bed in the front cab area. Basically the exact same thing. Notice it's got the safety netting so Uncle Gary don't roll out after he's had one too many Coors lights at night or something like that. Uh, again, uh, we're going to talk more about the construction outside, but basically guys all laminated and look at the like air traffic controller runway lightsaber glow beams on this thing. They put out some serious light and all the ceiling lighting is on dimmers. So you don't have to get blasted in the eyes with this thing. Uh, now things like entertainment, you know, uh, are going to be optional. Not everybody in the truck camper world is looking for a giant flat screen. Although at, at this kind of thing, I, 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 I'd be, I'm surprised it's not there. There's also an electric space heating fireplace option you can put down there instead of those two little cabinets. Um, <laughs> and you see how big and thick this central pillar is? Folks, that's the shower. And we're going to come back to the bathroom in just a minute. First, though, I want to uh, pivot us around here into the full-on kitchen uh, slide. <laughs> Frankly... This is bigger than a lot of kitchens I see in a lot of travel trailers that are much larger. And at a glance, you might have looked at it and said, Oh no, not for nothing, but the uh, prep space is a little lacking there, nerd. Well, that big hardwood countertop extension certainly helps. This whole counter and sink combo is an all one piece, like solid surface molded feature. There's no seams in here. And it's important to note, it's actually quite deep and if i get down here you see there are uh power outlets overhead um i want to point those out because one they're not too tall uh so you know appliances that have short cords like coffee makers should still be able to reach but you can keep your appliances back there while you're keeping your prep work up here and i mean what you're going to see here is like every little pocket of space it's nerdism number 37 not an ounce of space gone to waste now sometimes i forget that, uh, you know, YouTube has a potentially worldwide reach. I had someone the other day, uh, they said, why do you Americans measure your space in ounces? <laughs> and no, we Americans do not measure our cabinet spaces in ounces. It's just the stupid things that I say. Apologies for the confusion there. Um, eight cubic foot gas electric two-way fridge is the standard on here. I don't believe they offer anything else because uh, a lot of these truck cameras are really geared to off-grid focus. The propane side of that fridge is very, very popular. I mean, the drawers are all like, what is it? It's like five-eighths plywood boxed drawers. Just incredible construction and overkill. I'm going to reach here around the corner here a little bit. You can see that's actually a hanging closet. And you're going, wait a minute. So they gave me a closet, but not a pantry? No, they gave you two of those. Or I suppose we could be super technical and say they gave us one giant one. Um, but the thing is, this is like these shelves are adjustable, are removable. And you might notice in the bedroom, there's uh, space for TV hookups. Uh, the hookups actually hide up there out of the way, but they don't interfere with any of your, your like storage. But the thing is like, these aren't just, this isn't just Luan. Like that is plywood. They have plywood interior cabinet shelving. Uh, it's just, <laughs> it's not stuff you see every day. Now, a second ago, you might have noticed how the toilet was just sort of open air into uh, the bedroom or the living room. Well, uh, that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. You see how we have a sliding partition wall there. This is what it looks like on the other side of that uh, sliding track door. Now, I realized uh, just now in my floor plan and a flash flyby footage early in the video, I did not show you the shower. Well, here's the shower, and there's a picture of me standing in it, just so you have an idea of space. And that looks like a 30 by 36 inch shower that again, even larger travel trailers often don't do. Uh, what's crazy, this bathroom is part of the dinette slide. It has a sofa and bathroom super slide. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen that. 
So looking at it back from the other direction here, my Uncle Gary would love this because he likes to have the door open when he uses the pop, but neither here nor there. Um, it actually sits up really high where my legs are long enough, my feet were barely touching the floor. So if you're a little shorter than me, <laughs> you may actually want a, uh, a stool to put your feet on while you're using the stool. Now I did find one thing in here that uh, so just again, trying to be fair, like the lack of struts on these overhead doors sort of surprised me. And by the way, I realize I haven't shown you up here. Our converter controls, outside lighting, um, tank monitor system, and generator controls are all right up here. Uh, I also mentioned how we have dimmable lighting in the living area. Well, that's this right here. And uh, I'm going to pivot you slowly so as to not make you sick. But I mean, it can make a heck of a difference. Now, if you're seeing a little bit of a flicker there, that is actually a result of a digital camera trying to lock in and light balance the scene. Um, so it's like trying to go, ooh, no, keep this. Wait, no, readjust, readjust, readjust. Um, it's It doesn't flicker like that when you're actually using it in person. Now, looking up here, this is interesting to me. And it's something that a lot of people actually ask for. A lot of people are saying, RV manufacturers give us the worst crappy quality beds. Can you please just give me something that has no bed and let me put my own in? And that's kind of what they're doing here. Now, by default, I love that big skylight. By default, this is sized for a 60 by 80 north-south queen. However, you have the option of deleting either the left or right-hand side wardrobe closets and um, spacing it for a king bed and i do believe you'd be able to get a full-on 76 by 80 true resi queen in there and i mean when is the last time you saw a truck camper that literally had enough space to have your own yoga meditation studio in the headboard area of the bed my father plays dominoes better than yours she does have one significant achilles heel beyond the, uh, the price tag and the weight. And that is with the slides closed, standing out here on the steps, basically it's got effectively like absolutely no road mode. But the rear slide, since it goes out the back and it doesn't stick out the sides, um, if you open that, well, you're opening it backwards into your parking space. So I kind of consider this to be a viable thing. The trick is, sure, you can get in here but other than that, you're still not able to access very much. I don't know, maybe the sink, maybe a little bit of prep space. Maybe you can sit in the sofa and take a little bit of a, a travel break. But if you want to do anything with this, you pretty much got to have the slides open. But the thing is, being a truck camper, it's so easy to maneuver around. You just park wherever you need to. Now, truck campers are a little harder to move around, so I didn't want to ask our team to go jockey and all this stuff. I just figured, you know what? They're a little close together, but they're smaller. I think we're still going to be able to see around them well enough. And once again, I just I can't get over the monstrosity size of this thing. Uh, pardon the tree. Uh, compare, I mean, look at this. It's, it's, a, it's a monster. It's monstrously large. So, construction. This is all aluminum skeleton this is all vacuum laminated floors walls slide roof everything is vacuum laminated you have a one-piece tpo roof up top um the uh uh jacks here they're all standard remote control uh power jacks because a big thing like this i don't think you want to spend a lot of time manually cranking it uh i know i don't now, I feel like Indiana Jones uh, with the walls of the Temple of Doom closing in on him over here, but neither here nor there. We're going to make this work. We're doing it live, pre-recorded uh, live. I was live when I recorded this anyway. Black tank flush and a fully enclosed locking compartment for our sewer hookups, including the pull valve. Uh, and where I think that's nice is, one, it's protected away from the weather, but two, uh, anyone who's ever camped, have you ever gone to a place where there are... I'll try to be nice as I say this. Unmonitored children roaming the place like a pack of wolves. Uh, you ever have one of them pull your black tank valve? My dad had that happen twice. Rough. And uh, having that enclosed, that would be a uh, that'd be a nice thing, as it were. Also, 
generator prepped with option for factory generator, you can also get this built with a larger um, generator compartment in case you wanted to put, uh, I, I saw notes of like, say like a Honda or a Yamaha like 2200, but that's an Onan 2500 propane right there. I think that's pretty sweet. Uh, of course, because this thing, uh, by, by the way, I think it goes without saying, we're in one ton dually country. Like we, I, we all understood that, right? Half tons need not apply. Um, uh, the the Ford Flippin' Ranger uh, is probably still a little bit under-equipped to handle this. For those who are unaware in the internet, there's this thing in towing forums where the Ford freaking Ranger is constructed with unlimited towing and payload capacity. And it's a joke because you see people Ford Rangers acting like they have a one-ton truck sometimes. And I'm not criticizing every Ford Ranger owner. Anyway, um, <laughs> look Look at this. Look at this diesel pusher belly tray cargo nonsense. This is insanity over here. And I glanced and I was actually for a moment like, really? One propane tank? And then I went, wait a minute. That's an auto changeover regulator. And then I look back there and realize there's another 30 pound tank squirreled away behind it. Now that might be a little tricky to get those out when it's refill time, but I mean, not a lot of truck campers are gonna give us 60 pounds of propane capacity. The steps are built in? but they recess back into the camper so you don't gotta worry about them when you're not using them. And you got like a luxury fifth wheel, uh, extra large grab handle over here. Um, and again, triple slide, slide awnings are standard on this. Plus you got the big awning that goes out over here over the door side awning. And uh, if I get you up here, we're gonna take a peek at the roof in just a second. But uh, because you're roughing it, <laughs> you've got a TV outside of this thing. It's, <laughs> oh my Lord. Now, uh, you don't wanna be getting up here on the roof when the rear slide is open, which is kind of what I'm doing right now, which is why I'm not fully climbing up there. I'm holding onto this little cargo rack just to make sure I don't go backside over tea kettle off of this sucker. But yeah, fully walkable roof, low profile air conditioner. You see the max air fan over here. Um, this does not have any sort of their off grid package, but there are three different levels of off grid on this uh, where you could go up to something like Oh, I'm trying to remember offhand, like 540 watts of solar, uh, all kinds of batteries, 3,000 watt hybrid inverter, run the air conditioner off grid if you want to. I, like I said, I think this is one of the very few RVs I've seen where you might be able to legitimately full time off grid with this thing. It just depends on how much you're going to crank that air conditioner, but holy cow, guys. By the way, the first step of that ladder is awful high up there. So how did I do it? Well, it's probably better for the safety commission that I don't say. Uh, so instead, I'll simply answer in song by saying, Come with me and you'll be in a world of OSHA violations. Now, an interesting closing note. Uh, I'm here at our Salt Lake uh, you know, dealership right now. They're actually, I think, one of the second largest volume truck camper dealerships in the nation, if I remember right. So, I mean... You know, if you're looking for stuff that actually can fit on a half ton, uh, you know, up to your three quarters or up to the one ton dualies or uh, frankly, I don't know that you'd be disappointed hauling this on a medium duty truck. Like I said, this thing, it feels like it goes on the back of some like military cargo hauler or something. This is just, <laughs> I love my job. Let me know what you think about this crazy thing. Uh, evidently mammoths are not extinct, but here's one funny thing. These are so hard to find. Again, uh, they're so rare. They're not built in a high quantity. I probably don't have one on our website that we can check. If I, I don't normally do something like this. If I had to totally shoot from the hip and, and folks, I could be way, way off. If this runs, I don't know, around 70, 80, something like that. I wouldn't be surprised just with the way things are. I could be totally off base though definitely give our team here a call. Uh, the folks here at our Salt Lake dealership are probably going to be better equipped to answer that for you. I weirdly don't see pricing uh, come across my desk very often, which is why I relate back to our website in case you're curious. But enough of that. I've got a lot more truck campers I need to cover. So thank you very much. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if this is something you're interested in that I haven't been able to show us very often. Maybe I'll start a truck camper Tuesday. I don't know. But until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun. <laughs> and woolly mammoth, everyone. <laughs> I sounded like Woody Woodpecker.
It's basically the exact same thing here. I love how fast it moves. Also, whoop. 